It is the ANC that is mobilizing the entire country today around the question of peace. You would also know that I have made several calls at public rallies that no solution is possible in South Africa without involving Chief Mutelezi. You would know this. Yeah, yeah. I have made that call not once, but several times. But it is the government that is responsible for all our problems in regard to Natal. The questions that I have put to Mr. De Klerk, he has not been able to answer. I wonder if you can answer them. The government has had no hesitation whatsoever in suppressing similar violence before. Why is it that it has not even attempted to suppress that violence? After all, no government anywhere in the world can tolerate violence in which close to 4,000 people have been killed without intervening. Why is your government not intervening? That is the question that you must answer. Uh, I would answer you by saying that I don't represent the government and I would hope that the government would do exactly what you say. I do not quarrel with you and I do not presumptuously lecture you, Mr. Mandela. I wish you well. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. You. Mandela. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have ripped through the first part of this broadcast extraordinarily quickly. There are still a number of issues that we have to take up with Mr. Mandela, not the least of them being sanctions by the United States against South Africa. Uh, we will continue with that in the Nightline segment of this broadcast. Uh, just a quick break now. We'll be back. I'm Ted Koppel at the City College of New York, and this is a special edition of Nightline. Nelson Mandela, day two of his visit to the United States. More celebration, more adoring crowds. A reminder to his people of how far they have come. In the words of the prophet Isaiah, we have risen up as on the wings of eagles. A reminder of how far they have yet to go. The old order is crumbling. But the age of freedom has not yet done. Ladies and gentlemen, Nelson Mandela. <laughs> and in the middle of his day, an extraordinary town meeting, part of which you may have seen but for those who missed it, here's a sampler. We identify with the PLO because just like ourselves, they are fighting for the right of self-determination. Mandela displayed a sense of humor. Or should I put it more succinctly? Will your economy be based on the Marxist system, socialism, or capitalism, or both? I knew that that, that was the question you wanted to ask. <laughs> he responded to his critics at home. Monitor is a man by the name of Kurs van der Merwe, who's one of the leaders of the Conservative Party. Have a listen to what he has to say. Nelson, you're not going to nationalize the assets of the white people. I have worked for my banks, my mines, my businesses, and my farms. You are not going to take it. Stop your violence, stop your nonsense. All I have said to Kurs van der Merwe is to say, I am happy to know you. I hope that one day we shall have the opportunity to discuss the affairs of our country. There's nothing that prevents you, even in the United States, to pick up a telephone and, and say hello and talk to me as we're doing ever since you left jail. For me, 
to wash our dirty linen in a foreign country, even though it is an hour of I am hesitant to do that, even though here I have the feeling that I am among a comrades in arms. Very welcome to America. He faced his critics here head on. Those of us who share your struggle for human rights and against apartheid have been somewhat disappointed by the models of human rights that you have held up since being released in jail. You've met over the last six months three times with Yasser Arafat. Yasser Arafat. Colonel Gaddafi. Fidel Castro. Support our struggle to the hilt. I think I would be dishonest if I did not express profound disappointment with the answer that Mr. Mandela gave to the previous question because it suggests a certain degree of amorality. The... Above all, Nelson Mandela stated his positions forcefully. <clears throat> Why are you so insistent upon maintaining sanctions at a time when it can be argued that the South African government has made more concessions, your release being only one of them, than it has ever made in the past 40 years? I should know better about this matter, Mr. Coppel, than you. <laughs> no doubt. And now, in the Nightline segment of our broadcast, there's much more to come. From ABC News, this is a special edition of Nightline. A town meeting with Nelson Mandela from the City College of New York. And we are back once again at the City College of New York with Nelson Mandela. And Mr. Mandela, we have just heard a number of the things that you said in uh, our hour between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock this evening. Some controversial things, not the kinds of things necessarily that a very political man says. If you were very political, you might have been more concerned about not alienating some people in this country who have it within their hands, within their power, either to continue sanctions against South Africa or to raise those sanctions, to lift them. Why were you, why were you not a little more political? Perhaps we're too accustomed to politicians in this country. I do not understand what you mean. Perhaps uh, if uh, you clarify what you are referring to. I may be in a position to comment. What I'm saying <clears throat> is that in this country, for example, there has been for many years a close alliance between the Jewish population and the black population in the civil rights struggle. There is likely to be a rather negative reaction to some of the things that you have said. That reaction could very well cause people to call up their congressmen, their senators, and say, ah, go ahead, lift the sanctions. Why not? After all, President de Klerk is doing a great deal against apartheid. Only today, in fact, his number two man, Gerrit Villeun, said that the government perceives itself in South Africa as being part of the anti-apartheid struggle. Ah. <laughs> One of the problems <clears throat> we are facing in the world today. Our people who do not look at problems objectively, but from the point of view of their own interests, that makes things difficult because once a person is not objective, it is extremely difficult to reach an agreement. One of the best examples of this is to think that because Arafat is conducting a struggle against the state of Israel, 
that we must therefore condemn him. We can't do that. It is just not possible for any organization of or individual of integrity to do anything of the sort. I don't also want to, want to leave the impression, uh, if, if I might just inter intervene with one point, I don't want to leave the impression that this is only going to be a Jewish blank issue. There are a great many Cuban Americans in this country who will be just as offended by some of the comments you've made about Fidel Castro and Cuba. No, Mr. Coppell, I don't agree with you. I am saying that uh, it would be a grave mistake for us to consider our attitude towards Yasser Arafat on the basis of the interests of the Jewish community. We sympathize with the struggles of the Jewish people and their persecution right down the years. In fact, we have been very much influenced by the lack of racialism amongst the Jewish communities. In our own country, in the political trials that have taken place, when few lawyers were prepared to defend us, it has been the Jewish lawyers who have come forward to defend us. I myself, I myself was articled, I'm a lawyer by profession, and I was trained to become a lawyer by a Jewish firm at a time when few firms in our country were prepared to take blacks. <clears throat> and as I have said, we have many Jews, uh, members of the Jewish community in our struggle, and they have occupied very top positions. But that does not mean to say that uh, the enemies of Israel are our enemies. We refuse to take that position. You can call it being political or uh, a moral question, but uh, for anybody who changes his principles depending on whom he is dealing, that is not a man who can lead a nation. Apparently, Mr. Koppel, you have not listened to my argument. If you have done so, then you have not been serious in examining it. I have replied to one of our friends here that I have refused to be drawn into the differences that exist between various communities inside the USA. You have not commented that I am going to offend anybody by refusing to involve myself in the internal affairs of the USA. <clears throat> of the USA. <laughs> Why are you so keen that I should involve myself in the internal affairs of Cuba and Libya? No. I expect you to be consistent. I don't know if I have paralyzed you. No, 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 no. I... I'm afraid, Mr. Mandela, that, that paralysis does not set in quite that easily in my case. The point... Uh, 
Uh, since I've just about recovered from my paralysis, I want to come back to that question in just a moment. But first, we need to take a break. The point that I was trying to make, and, and clearly did not make uh, with any great success, but the point that I was trying to make is that you must not be misled by what is, after all, what in this country we call a hometown crowd. These people are very much with you. You have seen that. The people who come out to see you, the people who will come to Yankee Stadium to see you, the people who line the motorcade routes to see you, you don't have to convince them. They are people who already believe in you and believe in your cause. But this is a very large and diverse country. And when I was making my observations about the, the lack of politicism, and in this country saying someone is not a politician is not meant as an insult necessarily, uh, when I was accusing you of a lack of, of political qualities there, I was wondering whether you are conscious of the impact that you will have on a great many people who are not here today, who do not see you in perhaps the same benign fashion that so many people in this audience see. Well, as far as the Jewish question to begin with, I have had the discussions at my own initiative with prominent Jewish leaders to straighten out this affair. Amongst the people I saw was Mrs. Helen Sussman, who has been an MP in our country for more than 30 years. There was Mr. Mazens, who has been a judge in Lesotho, Botswana, and the old Rhodesia. There was the chief rabbi of Johannesburg. There was Professor Katz from the University of Witwatersrand and an eminent uh, community leader in, in South Africa. We discussed this question and all misunderstanding was clear. The question of Yasser Arafat and the PLO. I have also discussed the question with uh, the Jewish leaders in the USA and very top people like Mr. Sigmund. We reached an agreement on this question and we saw eye to eye. Now, I don't know where your concern arises. The Jewish leaders themselves are able to determine their own affairs. Nobody else is entitled to say that uh, the Jewish leaders are going to be concerned about your stand. Let because me... I, just a minute, sure. okay. Because I have had the discussions with them and those discussions will reach consensus. But uh, there are matters, of course, in which we did not agree. <clears throat> but uh, the position which we take as the ANC, I thought we were able to explain it in such a way that it removed the concern of the Jewish community. Let's broaden it I up. I am still prepared to do that even in this talk. If the Jewish leader have any doubts about our stand, I am prepared to address them and to allay their concern because they are a very important community both in South Africa and of course in the States. And I'm prepared to iron out any differences that might exist. But they must know what our stand is. Arafat is a comrade in arms and we treat him as such. Mr. Mandela, we need to take a break again. When we come back, we'll be taking up the issue of sanction, sure to be one of the major questions, one of the major topics of conversation, when our guest, Mr. Mandela, visits Washington at the beginning of next week. Allow me, Mr. Mandela, to broaden the subject out a little bit and to, to introduce now uh, another distinguished guest here, uh, Senator Boren, who indeed will be called upon very shortly, to vote upon the issue of sanctions. Senator Boren, uh, I wonder if you'd be good enough to stand up and, and to give me your assessment of how much trouble do you think Mr. Mandela is going to have on this issue? How warmly will he be received in the U.S. Congress? Ted, I think he's going to be very warmly received by people in both parties and by the uh, administration as well. While there may be some differences of opinion on certain issues, uh, like uh, positions on Arafat and Gaddafi, I think the American people understand what has gone on in South Africa. We have seen families divided because they've been classified according to race. We know that people are denied the right to vote because of race. We know that people are detained and not even given a trial because of race. And the American people 
regardless of party or position on other issues, are not about to relieve the pressure until that system is changed. <laughs>